Great to be here. So um, I'm just going to cover my skin, some insights so far, but more importantly, how you can get involved. Um, so as Karina mentioned just now, actually, um, every body's treatment journey is slightly different. People have different goals and, um, and uh, needs. And part of that is because everybody's psoriasis is different and everyone's psoriasis has a variable course. So as we've sort of tried to show here, for some people, their psoriasis might be gradually progressive over time. For others, it might have a more fluctuating course with times when it gets better, other times when the skin gets worse. And for some people, actually, it might have a more dramatic sort of onset with um, very bad severity from the very beginning that remains um, so during the course of, of their lifetime. Wouldn't it be great to know at the beginning of that um, sort of psoriasis disease journey, what that course will be and how can we predict that? Um, and that's one of the um, things that we're trying to achieve with my skin. But what we do know is that there are many different factors that play into what determines the course of psoriasis. And there's a very complex relationship that we're increasingly appreciating between psoriasis and our physical and mental health, whether that be nutrition, smoking, alcohol, um, exercise, and the other medical problems that um, someone with psoriasis might have. And Karina mentioned, for example, psoriatic arthritis. Now, and we mustn't forget that all of these factors change over time as well. So with my skin, we are keen to discover or start to understand how psoriasis changes over time and importantly, why. Um, and to try to understand the complex relationship between psoriasis and our physical and mental health. And the hope is that with a better understanding about what changes psoriasis over time and all of these other factors that play into it, we might be in a better place to more intelligently intervene to ultimately um, improve outcomes in psoriasis. So we hope that with more information, um, we might be able to prevent disease progression so those trajectories that you saw at the beginning, we might actually be able to intervene so that we can reduce that line that was going off into the sky back towards um, you know, the baseline. We hope that with more information, we can tailor treatment to each individual so that for each person, they can get the right treatment first time rather than the trial and error approach that Catherine was mentioning in her talk at the beginning. And ultimately to try to reduce this long-term treatment burden. And I saw one of the questions in the chat saying, well, what does, if we, if we started on a treatment, what does that mean for the long-term? Which is a really important question um, because with that comes a burden. So that's, um, that's what we are trying to answer too. A big part of my skin um, is tracking self-reported progress over time. So asking people with psoriasis to report through our online portal, as you'll see in a moment, and also asking for your permission to link your data to your healthcare record. So information that is already, um, that's a very rich information source about each individual um, in our electronic health records, but also all of the other um, big research studies that you've already contributed to. And BSTOP is, is a study that we, um, that Catherine heads up here at St. John's um, that runs in multiple centers across the UK and has involved the collection of genetic data from individuals with psoriasis as well as clinical data. So it's using all of the information that you've contributed already um, and making the most of that. There's also um, a big part of the work is to try to understand how we can better use photographs in understanding how we can track um, progress over time. And importantly, self-taken photographs so that you can do it in the comfort of your own home and we can learn more about how to use those to try to assess psoriasis. And as Catherine mentioned, we want, uh, it, my skin is beginning as a research study and it's very much an information collection portal. But the idea is to evolve this into an app 
so that it can be uh, it can start a two way communication. So the hope is that with the information that we get from patients, we can screen and support for related health conditions such as mental health, psoriatic arthritis and obesity, just being a few. But we can tailor the advice to the individual based on the information that you provide. So how do you get involved? Um, it's very simple. So we have a website called myskin.org. If you go to the website, um, it's an online survey, which takes 10 minutes. And we're asking you to provide um, information on your psoriasis, the treatments that you're receiving and how you feel. Um, and some of those components are the things that Karina mentioned. So we'll be asking about your quality of life, also um, about your mental health and other aspects of your physical health. This is the website. And when you go to myskin.org, you see the um, top green button at the top of the page. You click that to complete the survey and it opens up a very simple form. Part of the first part of the form is filling in a consent form, which is simple tick boxes and, um, and a, a signature, which is called an e-consent. And then there, uh, then a questionnaire appears and there'll be, uh, it's about 10 minutes worth of the questionnaire that ends with um, the option to provide three photographs. And this is optional, um, but if you're happy to provide it, these are the three photos that we ask for, your worst affected site of your skin, your chest and your abdomen, and then your legs. Now we ask, um, we'll go back to you every three months, initially for a year to ask for a, an update. And this is a shorter survey where it's simply an update to ask how your skin is doing three months later and how you're feeling. And this really is there to help us get this picture of how things are changing over time. And um, again, not just focusing on the skin, but focusing on all of these other facets of your mental and physical health. So far, um, we have 446 participants. So thank you to everybody who has taken part. We launched this at the Psoriasis Association Conference where Catherine and I presented back in June. Um, it is anybody who lives in the UK who has a diagnosis of psoriasis can participate, no matter what type of psoriasis you have and um, what, what severity of psoriasis and no matter what treatment you're on. So please do take part. Um, so far, of those 446 people who've kindly contributed, their average age is 51. And the average age that their psoriasis started is 22. We have slightly more females who are participating, so 67% um, so far. And um, on the left here, you can see that most of the people who have taken part so far are towards the milder end in terms of their psoriasis severity. So clear, nearly clear, mild. And 71% um, are using creams and ointments. 34%, so just over a third, are taking an injection treatment or a biologic. And 15% are on a tablet treatment for their psoriasis. Nearly 50% have said that a family member has psoriasis and um, nearly 30% have psoriatic arthritis. We ask what triggered your psoriasis for the first time. And here you can see that a third of people who have taken part so far said stress triggered their psoriasis for the first time. Um, and 13% say that a throat infection triggered it. So we'll be exploring some of these in more detail as our data set gets bigger to try to understand more about this, but already it's um, very interesting. And then we ask the question, well, what makes your psoriasis worse? 70% said stress makes their psoriasis worse. 20% says alcohol has an impact. And 50% say that the weather makes it worse. And in particular, that's cold weather. One in four people who've taken part um, are screening positive for anxiety and one in five for depression. And 30% have already been diagnosed with a mental health problem. So that really reflects kind of what we're increasingly appreciating is a huge um, mental health burden for the people who have psoriasis. So this sort of reporting is really helping to shine a light on that so that we can recognize it more and then move towards how to tackle this. 
To keep up to date with the data, please go to the website. So it's myskin.org and go to the discoveries and publication page where you'll see summaries of the data. We're updating this every month so that um, so it's, it's very much um, fresh um, information that's coming through. And just to finish by saying thank you very much to all of our research partners. So we're very lucky to be supported by the NIHR through the study and, of course, the Psoriasis Association, who, um, who've been fantastic in providing support from the very beginning. And this is the team who have been driving it forward. So thank you.